porch was outside of the setback. Okay, so it's already been approved more or less. That's what we're saying. It's okay. Building permit was approved. Mm -hmm. it, with the building permit was approved, and I mm -hmm. think what Kieran is saying is that there was an error in how it was shown and how the structure was ultimately okay. um, designed that resulted in it. Are they going to be allowed to keep this? That's, That's what, what we're here to discuss okay. tonight. Okay. All right. Um, has anybody really paid attention to the entrance and exits of this building, especially in the front? My concern about the front is it is so close to the road, there are children. Are there going to be children in that front building? I'm looking at it and seeing problems, Diane, unfortunately. That's, that's out of our purview right now. We're okay. supposed to just deal with the encroachment of the overhang into the setback okay. in the front. All right, my, my theory on it and talking to people in my neighborhood, a lot of people are gonna start driving down around the beach and come up at the other traffic lights because they know the traffic's gonna be horrific. Although Dakota Partner said in the beginning that it wasn't really gonna affect much of the traffic, which if you believe that, go out and have a drink. That's the way I look at it. Okay. My concern again about that is the beaches, the crosswalks, parking, people going down around there, smoking a cigarette, talking on the cell phone, no paying attention, and I'm afraid of what might happen down there also. These are things I take into effect because I've lived there for 50 something years and I, I know what the neighborhood's like. Um, uh, I, uh, Diane, I, just, I hate to cut you off, but w you're outside of our purview okay. on this. Uh, right. I apologize, but That's even right. when something bad happens there are definitely areas for you to vent um, that will hear you because obviously there'll be some kind of hearing or some kind of inquiry okay. but right now we're just dealing with the um, issue of the overhang right. into the side setback do you have a problem with the porch overhang do I looking at it no but because it's not within what it was supposed to be yes okay um, we could Footage force them to take it down but I really don't think that it would improve the aesthetics of the building and I think it's such a minor issue but um, we will note that you think it sh it doesn't it looks fine but mm -hmm. because it was an error it should come down that's what you're saying yes okay thank you thank you Diane um, before I go to the board I probably should close the public <coughs> hearing and then we'll have a discussion um, make a motion to just to close the public hearing. Moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, that was a quiet eye. Good. Okay. I guess I got a silent eye. Um, all right. Please discuss. Uh, Mr. Roach, you want any comments? Yes. I think it's a very unfortunate situation. I don't think it was done intentionally. I agree that the, uh, the porch roof breaks the mass of the building and it makes it more uh, presentable. Um, I'm looking at the special permit criteria. Uh, it mentions no undue nuisance, hazard, or congestion. It doesn't fall into that category. And these are the requirements for a special permit. So I really don't have an issue with it. Norm? No, I think from an architectural standpoint, uh, uh, it looks good, and I think it does break up the massiveness of the building, and I think it ought to uh, be allowed. Yes, um, from a public safety point of view, it doesn't present any problems. Um, it, uh, it's very pleasing to look at. It's a nice looking uh, development, and personally I think a couple feet is not going to, you still have 23 feet to the street line. Yep. It's not a big deal. Okay. Joe? I think the request for relief is fine. Mr. B? Yeah. Same comment. Okay. Any comments from our esteemed director? Nope. I, um, I did have in a potential um, suggestion with regard to a motion, but I, um, if you're giving um, the relief, as Tom noted, it needs to say that there's no nuisance and congestion, et cetera, and sometimes it's helpful if you actually give the reasons why you think that that's not doing it, and I've given some suggestions here in the memo, um, and if you guys are good with that, I will also incorporate that in the final decision that Brad would need to sign. Sure. Okay. Uh, call for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I would like to follow the special permit criteria 
and hold special permits shall not be granted unless the applicant demonstrates no undue nuisance hazard or congestion will be created and that there will be no substantial harm to the established or future character of the neighborhood or town. A motion to approve Planning Board Special Permit Number 114 to grant reduction at the front set yard setback for Building A located along Route 28 from 25 feet to approximately 22.9 feet due to the construction of the front porch roof within the front yard setback. Is that sufficient or do you want to continue? Nope, that, that's fine. I'll but second it. Motion second. Any other comments? Seeing none, hearing none, all will call for a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstained. You have your relief. I am going to keep this though. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. We needed five votes tonight for to have the special permit. Moving on, we have our favorite friends down in Barnstable. <laughs> Join. Please. Um, after the Cape Cod Commission updated their regional policy plan, the next thing that they were looking at was to update the local comprehensive plan regulations in order to match the RPP. And they have actually developed um, a nice set of draft regulations that have inc been included in your packet, um, along with a um, draft um, guidance document for frequently asked questions, which is also very helpful. Um, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make the whole process a little bit easier for communities to get a certified, <laughs> you'll probably look at me skeptically, um, LCP consistent with the RPP. Um, there's going to be less technical analysis that's required. Um, sometimes you'll see a lot of these LCPs could be hundreds of pages long. Um, we're trying to get a little bit away from that. There's going to be more goals and action based um, and relying on a lot of other plans that we've already developed. We have a housing production plan, um, open in space and recreation plan and using those. I think one of the biggest things that's going to um, need to really kind of be coalesced a little bit more is we need to come up with a capital infrastructure and facilities plan that would document that we have adequate facilities in order to uh, sustain the growth or the goals that we have um, in the local comprehensive plan. Um, there's also in the guidance document a, um, a very laid out template that could be used to try and simplify that. It was very helpful that they that they did that. Um, they also simplified the approval process. It's more of working with the commission all along throughout the entire process. Um, we still need to have that one big public hearing with the, on the whole entire draft, and we still need to get town meeting approval. But then once you get that, hopefully you've already worked with the commission well enough so that then when you set it to send it to the commission for their vote at their public hearing, it's kind of more perfunctory because you've already done the work uh, in the back. Background. Um, the certification obviously is beneficial to us because it allows us to do things um, like modify our growth incentive zone. So that's something that if we want to start changing that, we would need to have a certified local comprehensive plan. We want to change any thresholds to a chapter H or have any um, be able to sit at the table for a regulatory agreement on a DRI. We need a certified um, LCP. Um, I've already commented. Um, previously on, a, on an earlier draft of the LCP regulations to Jack McCormick, and it looks like they incorporated all of my comments, so I personally don't have any additional comments that I would offer. Um, I didn't know if the board board had anything that they were interested um, in providing. One of the things that um, we talked about when they were here, I think it was Sharon Rooney, wasn't it, and someone else? Yeah. Um, was the VCOD. And um, I'm just wondering if they had an opportunity to just review that in detail in regards to what we try to accomplish and how it melds with their uh, LCP. I think um, the, the VCOD was probably more related to the regional policy plan. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where you started getting into all of those different place types. Um, I had commented quite a bit on concerns that I had that we have a lot of um, suburban commercial on Route 28 that we would like to convert to a village center and I'd like to make that easier to do that yeah. versus where they had identified our village center as being um, uh, South Yarmouth Village which really yeah. is kind of 
perfect the way <laughs> it yeah. is. There's some development that could happen in some of the strip malls as you get a little bit further away from there, yeah. but a lot of the area they identified was actually in residential zoning districts, and we just don't have the zoning uh, in place, nor would we want it um, to, to develop that area. So I think how we word it in the LCP, I think, is going to be more emphasizing our goals of converting that suburban commercial to an activity center. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we can word it in our LCP. I don't think that there's much that we could do with the regulations that they're proposing to emphasize. emphasize well, I think that. when they were here, they got the gist of what we wanted to try to, you know, accomplish. And one other thing under that chapter H, I mentioned this a while back, in regards to the Davenport companies um, coming before us in the town as well, in regards to um, their hotels along South Shore Drive. And I believe that that relief, relief was given to them uh, for the period of 20 years by the commission. I think that's getting close to that 20-year period. So I'm it's just wondering. It was before my time. It was 08, 09, wasn't it? Yeah. Was when it? We did that? Yeah, I thought it was. Wasn't that 08, 09? Somewhere, somewhere in there. I thought it was yeah, later than that. but I can check on it. It's within yeah, the nine years I was on the board. Hmm? Yeah. It's within the nine years I was on the board. Yeah. yeah oh, so you've been here since 2009 because we looked yeah. that up the other day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it had to have been. So we probably have 10 years in. Yeah, it's, good. yeah, it's halfway there. Good. Clock's ticking. Any other comments on the LCP? I know I flinch every time, but that's just me. <laughs> well... I just, I, is, is it still you have to vote on the entire thing or can you document by document? No, you, you have to vote. I think you have to vote on the whole thing. Um, yeah. But um, one of the things that we did get at annual town meeting was some free, uh, $20,000 in free cash grants in order to start looking at um, some more of a visioning um, in preparation for um, amendments to the um, to the plan that we have right now. We did try and get some matching funds, the supplemental funds through DLTA, but we were, we were not successful. Um, so we're gonna take a look at um, what we can do with the $20,000 we, we have and, and how we might be able to hire some help to help with the visioning. I think one of the things Karen and I have been talking about is we've done so much. We have a lot of studies already done. We have a lot of projects that have either been recently completed or in the process or definitely already on the books to coming. So we are kind of envisioning it maybe maybe it's more of, okay, let's at least give the public an idea of summarize what we've done, mm. where we are, what we've yeah. done, and where, where we're kind of heading, and doing a little bit more of a check-in tour. So people don't kind of get, you know, public input overload. They're like, oh, I said this already 20,000 times at the different public meetings I've gone to. But if it's more of a, a check-in tour is kind of what we're calling it, of saying, this is where we are. What other ideas do you have, and do you think we're on the right track? And that will, I think, help inform us as we move forward with the local comprehensive plan. Well, I think we were looking at the chapter approach a while back, and I think that there was a lot of work that was done on affordable housing. So I'm wondering if that is going to have to uh, be reviewed again. Um, I think it does simply because they changed the RPP. Right. So now we need to convert everything. I mean, it's a good starting point. And it's yeah. more updated information than we had before exactly. on the, uh, the three sections that we did get um, approval for. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they got to be converted into the goals and objectives sure. of the of the RPP. We, obviously, it needs to be tailored to the town of Yarmouth, but we need to address those different goals and objectives in some way. I have one question, but I can wait. Uh, anybody else have a question or comment no. for? Um, I'm, uh, in looking over the um, the draft um, on page two uh, under D, it says the local planning committee may be either the planning board or specially des designated committee, and then the six um, elements uh, that go into the. Um, um, in, into the LCP, the vision statement, uh, identification of existing conditions, the uh, future goals, the capital facilities plan, housing plan, and targeted action and plan schedule. Um, uh, who's going to do all this? And um, is or or is <laughs> or, well, or, 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 or or is this being? Um, uh, a, a new set of uh, uh, tasks for this this um, this board to accomplish. Well, 
in, o in other words, in other words, I, I I I think I know the answer. I think staff is going to develop mo much of it, but um, then that effectively means that we only act as rubber stamps to whatever staff prepares. I think that uh, there's an element here that if we're going to have a l true local comprehensive plan, that we uh, we as a board uh, probably have to be a little bit more proactive uh, in in that effort. Um, that's just that, that's just an aside to to the way this um, the, the way this hits me. Um, this is a lot of words. Um, a lot of uh, good intentions, but someone's got to do it. And uh, if, if it only winds up being uh, a rubber stamp, then I think, um, uh, I, I, I think that uh, uh, minimizes the, the, the effort. Okay. How, how much of the workload could be accomplished by the commission? In, re in regards to uh, what Tom just brought up, the minimum criteria. Yeah, they do talk um, in the guidance document about the assistance that the commission can provide, and they specifically that, yeah. talk about, you know, the visioning, some technical information. Um, obviously, there's a lot of boring stuff related to an LCP, like the demographics, you know, what type of businesses and employment do you have, and just kind of a lot of that background information. Um, that we might be able to get from the commission. It would kind of be ideal if they kind of went through all of the towns and just provided everyone with like a packet of general information about your community that's all consistent in a format that, that they like to see it in. Um, but there is definitely some assistance that can be provided by the commission. Um, I don't think town staff can do all of this. No. Um, Consultant, perhaps? I think, I think the first step is kind of get the visioning and kind of the... Um, maybe some bones together of, of the LCP. I don't think it's rubber stamping. That's kind of, you guys have always been more than um, willing to give your time and effort to review things and comment on stuff and provide uh, input. Uh, I think that's kind of what had happened on some of the other ones. Um, but there is a lot of drudgery that usually, unfortunately, is done at the staff level. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, just to wrap up, I, I wish you a lot of luck. Hopefully the selectmen will put a drop dead date on it. Um, that's the one thing that's always been lacking, I believe, over the decades. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where they want to do it, and it's a great idea, but other things get on your plate. And then you're pushed, you, this gets pushed away because it's somewhere down the road, and it's common practices in all our lives to deal with what's in front right now. And, and we'll get to that later. I'm wondering, if, sort of like John F. Kennedy's Man on the Moon, if maybe they just set a deadline, you know, December well, 95th, whatever date. I think you're right. You know what I mean? I think it gets back to actually the Board of Selectmen goals. I mean, if, if you look at the goals that are listed in the last year's um, board goals, va the vast majority were probably DPW. Between DPW and, and community development was probably two-thirds of all of those goals. And when you look at the number of people that are available to implement those, that number of goals, there's exactly, there's not, a, there's not a significant number of people. So if the Board of Selectmen and the Planning Board wants to say to the Board of Selectmen, you know, this is really something that we think needs to be given a top priority, you know, then maybe we're not working on Route 6A improvements right now. You know, who's working on the drive-in site and implementing that? Um, I'm still working on the Parker's River Bridge. Uh, hopefully once that gets into construction, I can kind of ease out of it. Um, so there's a lot of other big projects. The bike study that we're working on um, with the Cape Cod Commission, and that might turn into some additional work. So what gets chopped off? This is their final draft? This is the one that they are going to be um, reviewing at the public hearing on the 25th, yes. Okay, and then yes. from there we'll send a copy to the selectmen and then we could brief them because we're going to, they're going to have to we're going to have to take this before town meeting right ultimately yes yes, yes. not for yeah that was the, the other question i had in the uh, q and a on on page 4 um, uh, does the commission certify the lcp before or after the town meeting uh, adoption in other words uh, this is going to give a somewhat of a time uh, a time restraint uh, to whatever 
we, uh, whatever we do on this or whatever the commission does uh, in the meantime. So I mean, timing uh, becomes an issue here as well. <coughs> yeah, you have to be prepared for a town meeting. <laughs> hmm. uh, and the, October and 20, like 21, 22, yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to be, it's going to be out there. Okay. I, I, I just have a. You do have a comment now. Go for it. I didn't know if Tom was. That's okay. Go ahead. Um, from your perspective, Kathy, this is a promulgation of regulations. So they're saying this is what we expect back from the town when we um, move forward and submit a, an LCP. Yeah. It must meet these requirements, these minimum requirements. And you're okay, basically, with the framework that they've outlined as a, as a regulatory document. I, I am. Okay. I, th I think a lot of the stuff that's required to be in here are part of their um, enabling act. Yeah. So they don't have a lot of flexibility to change some of that yeah. in this regulation this is, without this is not changing. New, this is not new in some... There's nothing in here that struck me as, oh, this is horrible. One, the, one of the comments that I had on the original draft had to do with, um, they had broken it down to getting tier one certification and tier two certification that yeah. was a little confusing. And then they also required a five-year update on the local constituents plan, and I'm like, people need more time to work the plan. If it's like a year to a year and a half process in order to get a LCP, you, you only longer. have like, right, you only have like, you know, three years to work the plan before you have to start looking at a new one. So they kind of changed that to just say you can kind of update it as you feel yeah, you need to, which is good, because it gives a little bit more flexibility to yep. people. Uh, that, that actually is part, part of my uh, question and concern for you, that there would be a baseline LCP that, in, it would be submitted in total, and then portions of that we might be able to amend and put forward um, as kind of a living dynamic document in front of them, because there are some benefits to us for having an LCP on record with them, right? right. Yeah. So we get it on record, and then we say, gee, um, as an example, Capital facilities plans change every year. We have a five-year plan that the Board of Selectmen approves. Do we resubmit that as part of the, oops, this is our update to, I'm not sure if that's clear in the regulations that actions taken by the Board of Selectmen on an annual basis naturally fit into updates that would be fed to update our LCP. Right, I think they do talk a little bit about that in updates and amendments. Um, that the, that the planning committee can pursue updates and amendments. Um, uh, yeah, the certification like, yeah. through the commission, yep. or you can decide that you basically are approved the updates and amendments of the action items in the capital facilities plan and housing plan yourself. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with updating certain sections of it and getting it recertified or, or <coughs> approved by yeah. to, to maintain your certification. Because you're right. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that won't change, but there's a lot of stuff that does. I mean, the housing production plan it gets changed. And on a, on a fairly right, consistent basis. basis. So I guess, I guess my qu question would be maybe um, this is something for a consultant to come in and possibly help with. Um, if there's funding that we can use, just to lay out a work plan right. um, on how we might um, work with these regulations to develop over time a work plan uh, for that that we would all be part of, mm -hmm. and and then beyond that, once an, a baseline LCP is submitted where are the intersection points in time every year at maybe it's annual town meeting certain things automatically become an amendment i don't know I, that that's kind of a question mark if there are feeders to this mm -hmm. that would automatically drive an update and we'd say it triggers an amendment we need to send this in and it would be kind of pro forma mm -hmm. um, in some way but i think we would need someone to help us think through I don't know that the existing process had this, the, the, our submission of a plan, our development of a plan with chapters that they approve piece by piece, which is what we've been doing. Right. right. Um, so I guess my question is, how, again, same vein as I think what I'm hearing from everybody, how do we do this? But I, I think a consultant helping us, or maybe staff can do it, a work plan mm -hmm. on a plan for the plan. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I hate to put it that way, but I think that might be helpful. I think we have a plan for the initial plan, which is the visioning, which I think is, is unfortunately, is gonna take staff because it's all staff knowledge. Yep. I mean, I'd have to like, the way I was envisioning it is having like, almost like meetings and interviews with like Carl von Home. What have you been working on that meets this goal? And what are you, what are you thinking of doing? And what is your future? And kind of just listing out when they did went through the Brewster visioning, yeah. they had developed what they called white papers, which I thought was a very intriguing idea and the best part of their whole thing because yeah. it pre presented to the public kind of a, a baseline of that topic for your community. And you could read each one as you wanted to over time, and it all being on the, on the, um, the town website. How was that disseminated? I, I think that there was public meetings as well as on their website, and they had a very, very, very active um, committee um, who actually wrote a lot of the white papers. Um, they also had the chairman of their committee was in a previous life a planner. So he brought a lot of horsepower and knowledge um, to that process and kind of ran it. There was very actually not a significant amount of staff involved. It was more secretarial administrative staff for posting of meetings and minutes and that type of thing. And the committee was able to basically run themselves. Essentially what you've just said is uh, along the lines that I, I brought up. Um, what what do we as members of the board, um, what do we contribute to this effort uh, ourselves? Uh, is there is there a role for us uh, to, to, to contribute? I think there's a significant role for you guys to contribute because I don't think anything really sh gets presented to the public until you guys are comfortable with it. I mean, is this the vision that you guys are looking for for the town of Yarmouth? Are these the ideas you want to put forth to meet these goals? There's just general ideas for talking points, I think, that gets presented by staff, but everything is just for your consideration. It's okay. not for you to just to adopt. Yeah. Kathy, I'm, I'm assuming that this is like a template that every town on the Cape is going to meet. Correct. Question, is there an advantage to having a local? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Comprehensive plan. Yeah, I mean, in competition with other towns, and do we have an opportunity to get grants if we have it on board? And if we don't, what's the negative? Do we do we lose out on the opportunity to get grants? I know that I think that you've been talking, like with Mark Forrest, with regard to whether having a certified local comprehensive plan would give us grants for, for wastewater. Right. Um, I don't know the mechanism for that. Um, but I'm just saying if, let's say, half a dozen towns on the Cape jumped on this thing, reformatted their comprehensive local co comprehensive plan to to the uh, Barnstable County, mm -hmm. or the commission, mm -hmm. and uh, they have an opportunity to, to, to be ahead of the game and they get grants. And the, the towns that are not. I don't know what grants you would get from having a certified local comprehensive plan. I'm, I'm unfamiliar with, with that. The benefits to a local comprehensive plan really have to do with changing your um, development of regional impact uh, threshold criteria. So you might you be able to. building fees. If I and you, might, you can charge yeah. impact fees. Uh, you can participate in the regulatory agreement process and be a party to that. Um, for example, like what um, Tom was mentioning for the red jacket, they have a regulatory agreement but we are not party to that regulatory right. agreement because we didn't have a certified LP. I mean, like, our comprehensive plan doesn't even talk about wastewater at all, okay? There's zero in there. There's maybe a few little hints here and there about, well, we should do something. And it's like 20 years old. Some sections are 20 years old, some yeah. sections are five years old, some sections are, you know, in between. There's no doubt that we need to update our local comprehensive plan. But we're also putting, um, I hate to, to boil this down, but we're putting the cart before the horse. It all comes down to the selectmen. They, we work at the behest yep. of the selectmen. Right. Um, I don't know about the union rules, but I have a feeling you get your marching orders somehow from the selectmen. Um, it comes down to the selectmen. If they want to really put this on the front burner, then we're going to have to do it. Right but now, I haven't seen that. Mr. I Chairman. I really haven't seen a major shift on the LCP in a while. Here's the thing. We're the planning board, right? Yeah. Shouldn't we be advocating for getting some of this done? 
yes and no. There and, may be other things in front of us that, for example, last two years ago we had the marijuana issue right in front right. of us. That took precedence, so this got pushed to the side. Right. There may be something right around the corner that's going to call our attention before the LCP. But I, the LCP is very important, but it keeps getting pushed down the road because we keep having these flash fires right before us. Right. So but what I'm saying, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is. We should find out from the commission if there's any disadvantage to not having the LCP. From a grant standpoint. From any standpoint. Well, we know and the disadvantage. We've just told you what the advantages are, so not having one would be the, you wouldn't get those and that would be your right. disadvantage. But, but the we, grants need, is a good we need good reasons to present to the Board of Selectmen why they need to appropriate some funds and we need to move on this. That's my point. I mean, if, if it's just a document that's going to sit in the closet on a shelf and collect dust, who cares? We don't want to spend any money on that. Let's drag out that bluestone study again, shall we? The, we the, the board last night, right, the board of selectmen last night had a piece of their agenda was on the 2020 goals and objectives. 2020? I think it was the review of the goals it was and just the summary for what happened with the goals from last year. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I the, was there. the printout that was in the package it was, you know, not useful. No information. No information. <laughs> uh, but they do have, they obviously, annually, they do set out their yes. statement on goals and objectives. It comes out usually around now or September because we use it for budgeting purposes, at least on capital. Um, maybe that's the place where we tr we make a point that this LCP and the work on the LCP play, has a prominent place in their goals and objectives. And not just that it's, yeah, it's a piece of that one, and it's a piece of that, yeah, we're part of the housing one, and we're part of that, that it actually have a home, mm -hmm. in, and, and that they, you know, identify it as, a, as an important activity mm -hmm. for the town. The completion of this. And I, I'm hoping for a date that would be like, we'd like it ready for the October 2023 town meeting. So it's not set in stone, but it's kind of hardening. So now you have a three year window that you got to start to plan for. And that's why I think it would, help, it would help. We've never had that. We've never had a drop dead day where the selectmen say, we'd like it done by this. I think Tom yeah. had a good suggestion of once the, the draft regulations have been. Uh, finalized, that's a good opportunity to, with a cover letter the to launch. present it to the Board of Selectmen with some emphasis of you'd like to see this become a higher priority. I just don't want them to keep all the other goals on there and then just add this on and be complete the LCP certification in a year because it's not going to happen. So maybe there's a, a, a first step that can be included in the goals of the next year that's realistic of actually being able to accomplish. Uh, yeah. I, I what, what we would want for them to, what we want us to focus on for the next year as achievable. Um, that has milestones and pieces of it that we know could be achievable once these regulations become real. Yep. Um, yeah, I think that, that time frame would work would work really, really well. Looking at it a little more holistically, uh, I think um, the um, uh, comprehensive plan would be um, most helpful in the in the uh, selectmen's uh, goals and objectives. Um, it, just for for that same reason that, that Joanne has said, the idea the idea that if we're going to have a community or a town. Um, uh, and have a, a comprehensive plan. Is, isn't that what, what the selectmen really are looking for too? Um, in other words, it, it, it dovetails with their objectives, with their needs to, to identify uh, the, 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 the future course of the town, and that helps give us some guidance as to which way they want us to move as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I think both Tracy and Eric would probably have a good understanding of this yes, in regards to the time they spent on the planning board. And we, when we take a hard look at this, we don't have to look at everything at once. We could concentrate on what we think it would be the initial problems that are coming forward to the town relative to community activity centers, um, industrial activity centers, rural centers, natural area place types. These things here that, that we have probably indication from people in general where they want to start developing. So if, if we look at those areas, 
you know, it might behoove us to get a head start as opposed to try and look at the whole thing. I think Revisit affordable housing, you know, historic entities. Okay. I, th I think the, um, the comprehensive plan, plan is laid out in a certain way. Right. Obviously the vision statement is something, along with the visioning that we will probably be starting this fall, would be a good, good thing to, let's get that done. Right. Yeah, let's get that done. Um, that's a good chunk of work, and I think it would give us a, a good idea where we want to head in the future. Well, that also will give us a time frame for the selectmen. Yeah. You know what I mean? If we haven't reviewed these specific entities, you know, I wouldn't want to be quizzed by the selectmen on them. So let's, let's just uh, keep that in mind. Okay. Thank you for your feedback. And uh, Norm, stay tuned. We may have another job for you after you leave the planning board. <laughs> okay. Uh, minutes of planning board meeting of June 5th, 2019. I'll move to accept the uh, minutes of June 5th planning board meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second on the board. Uh, I read through it. Yeah, that was Robbins. Yep. Yeah, it was, that was an interesting meeting. Uh, <laughs> any of the comments seeing none, hearing, and call for a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstained? Are you abstaining, Joanne? I am. I wasn't here. There you go. Thank you. Uh, you emailed us the stuff from the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm. Did we miss anything recently? No, I don't think so. Okay. Committee updates. Norm. Any updates, sir? No updates. I don't know. Mr. Barron, Ms. Joanne, Lee, anybody? No updates. Yeah. Um, planning, uh, not planning, um, housing um, at last meeting, um, which was June 20th, um, uh, an awful lot of uh, information um, was presented. Uh, and one of the um, elements um, was the uh, Captain Gladcliffe um, sale mm -hmm. uh, that that is that took a very lengthy path for that uh, to be able to tra uh, change hands and um, um, but it, it it was finally accomplished and uh, it, it's something that Mary uh, Wigan said uh, they they've been working ever since the original sale. Uh, the original conversion of the uh, Gladcliffe uh, from motel to to uh, uh, rentals uh, was uh, was done. It, it a lot of the a lot of the people who were residents there never never um, signed in on the uh, n never conformed to the um, obligations of of the uh, uh, of the original agreement. So um, by getting the new sale. Uh, done. It it it's clarified all of that. Uh, so the new owners have uh, made a commitment to that, and uh, that that's been that's been very positive. Um, the um, there there have have been um, other things with the with the uh, um, with, with housing, but it's that that right now has been one of the biggest accomplishments th for this year. Okay. Lee, anything? Um, yeah, uh, the uh, Water Resources Advisory Committee has been conducting these uh, uh, group organization presentations. Uh, we did one at Bass River. Tom was uh, the organizer for that one. And uh, I think they had one for the, I missed it, it was for the Hyannis Park then that went well, I guess. And we, the goal all along with our committee has been to inform the public and try to engage the public as much as possible uh, and get them to understand the significance of doing this program. Um, all leading up to a town meeting, I think it's October 29th, um, and in which, at which time, right now, the committee is formulating what we're going to request or what we're going to re recommend to the Board of Selectmen be put on the agenda 
of that town meeting. And there may be some items that are on this town meeting and maybe some that might be in the spring. Um, <clears throat> the big thing is the Tritown agreement. And that's in the legislature right now. That's, going, that's getting ready imminently to be approved by the legislature. That's gonna come back to each town the, they've already, the selectmen have already agreed on the language for the uh, three-town agreement. And we want to move forward, obviously, at the town meeting in the fall to get approval from the town meeting to um, enjoin in that, that agreement. Okay. The, um, the other thing, of course, is uh, it, assuming that the agreement goes forward, then there's going to be a commission established, and each town will have representatives sitting on that commission that will actually run the new regional wastewater system. And um, along with that, we're going to make a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen on how much money we need for phase one. Uh, there's gonna be a number of items that we're going to be considering to have put on the town meeting agenda as articles. And we're gonna see what happens there. There's another thing that just, I went to a meeting on Monday and it was very interesting. We met with the C CEDC, and uh, there was a number of recommendations that came out of that meeting. It was, uh, I think the, the chairman and I were there, and I don't know if there's anybody else um, that went. But uh, the CEDC is in very um, supportive in our endeavor here. And they see that this is the linchpin. Yeah. If we can't get this, then <laughs> Yarmouth is going to fall behind in, in, get, in getting anywhere in the future as far as de commercial development and that kind of thing. So it, it, it's a pretty critical thing. We're, there was also a recommendation that we develop some stories we, and this is kind of interesting, um, where um, there are a number of stories out there that can tell the reasons why you want, to, want this program to move forward. There's sto uh, commercial um, developments that can't make improvements, they can't do certain things. There's even people in residential communities. High and density communities, yep. So uh, we're, we're coming up with something on that too. It's, you should reach out to Bob Dubois. As Bob said famously years and years and years ago, the day the developer has to worry about what's just above ground and not below, his day Yarmouth is gonna explode with new business development. So there we go. What was his name again? Bob Dubois, former director of the Chamber of Commerce. If you. Google him up. I hate using the word Google. I, use, I like to use Bing. You'll find him out in what, Indiana? I believe he is now. Yeah, I still have his cell phone if you need. He's a I, wonderful man. I attended um, the meeting, uh, the presentation at the uh, Cultural Center, and uh, I, I think that uh, it was very well received, but it, that type of uh, outreach uh, is, is quite important. Um, I, I think uh, uh, Mr. Roach uh, has said that the past effort a number of years ago, the, even though there was an attempt to get public involvement and, and information, it's this kind of presentation that, that they're doing now is, uh, is, is most helpful and most uh, um, in, informative, uh, and, and that's good. Rich Bienavu uh, has emphasized the economic uh, impact uh, for the community, and I and I think that's um, and it's not it's not the the, the positive in, impact uh, of of how the taxes are going to go up, but how 
if we don't do it, the, the economic uh, impact on the town is going to be negative if we don't do it. Agreed, 100%. Uh, board member items, uh, go ahead. Hit us with it. Go ahead, sir. This can was I, my last meeting. Can I just oh. can I just interrupt with one more thing? Sure. Um, some of the questions that came up at some of these presentations had to do with residents being concerned about the fact that once sewers come in, that development is going to explode. Our response to that is that. Planning and zoning, planning and zoning really regulates that to a great degree, okay? And I, we, we are relying on the Planning Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals to keep the regulations in such a way that, that the town doesn't go crazy when we build a source. I Sorry. think we probably will have to, once we have sewers, look at whether some of the, um, the high-density mixed-use development areas that we have, whether we want to start scaling back some of those uh, for sure. Basically, um, the, we're working on, on evaluating a build-out, a new build-out for the town based on the current zoning and having some criteria with regard to um, Who's more likely to develop? You know, if you have a small lot in the floodplain, you're probably not likely to develop, even if you're in the BCOD. But if we, someone has a larger lot, we know that they're interested in development, then we would assign a certain build out to that. If we're going to be getting the zero interest um, state revolving loan funds, we can't go beyond that build out value. So this is a kind of a thing where you want to include as much build out as you can, but you don't want it to be too high because you're paying for that allocation at the wastewater treatment facility. Right. So it's trying to come up with some specific balance. The allocations for the actual sewer connections and those regulations are probably going to be Board of Selectmen bylaw regulations um, related to their job as the sewer commissioners. Mm -hmm. So they would be the ones who would say, okay, that, that development can get that allocation of such and such. And those are regulations that I know that David Young from CDM has been working on with other communities and would need to, to work up something similar um, for the town of Yarmouth. So it's not all being regulated by the, t by the zoning regulations. It's, it's the allocation is actually given by a different entity, but we may want to take another look and see if we've asked, if we've given too much away. We gave a lot in our zoning bylaw because we're trying to encourage development, even with that albatross around our neck of no wastewater. So once we, that's gone, we need to kind of see what we want to do and kind of maybe scale that back. And, and all I'm saying is that when we go to the town meeting, we need the planning board's backup on that. We need the, your, the support of the planning commission and to be able to say that growth is gonna be controlled from mm -hmm. a planning and zoning perspective. And yes, you're right. We, we're, we're limiting ourselves by how much flow we're buying into. Right. So, that there are a number of controls, but we need somebody to be able to speak to that when it comes up at, at the town meeting. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And that, that's, a good, that's a good thing for the chairman to be prepared for. We also talked about Agreed. Uh, transferring. Don't, don't say that. The uh, ability to have flow from one entity to another. Okay. If you're looking at maybe a butter's, someone's not going to utilize his lot. Maybe his abutter would be interested in purchasing that lot along with the rights relative to uh, flow. So I, I don't know what the it, rights relative area, to flow would be because it would be whatever you were discharging exactly. now. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it, yep. it is a, a possibility. TDRs. That's another one right up there. I no, don't no, want to deal yeah. with. Please. I thank didn't you. Mention that because <laughs> thank you. We never did twitch. Twitch. With twitch. That. Yeah. Uh, Norm, you're back on stage. Go ahead. Okay. Well, my term is up at the end of this month, and I've decided not to uh, re-up. So this will be my last uh, planning board meeting Sorry after you. nine years. Sorry um, to see you go. Do you think we can schedule another meeting for the 24th? <laughs> well, I'll come. <laughs> my term's not up. 
Um, <laughs> 31st. Um, Norm, you, uh, I, I heard you were the one from the Yurk responsibility you had. You dragged this young lady to Clancy's when it used to be at De Parma. Oh, it was it Karen. <laughs> was it Karen? Karen. It was it Karen? Yes. I heard you dragged one of them. Well, there you go. You've had a they long were interchangeable. It's fine. <laughs> You've had a long, distinguished <laughs> yeah, career. Yeah. Feels like it. Huh? And uh, <laughs> thank you for being here. We're going to miss you. Uh, how many years were you chairman? Three. And ladies and gentlemen, this man holds the record <laughs> for the fastest planning board meeting. I think it was 12 minutes. Uh, a meeting that will not be smashed tonight. Um, the members might be later on, but yeah. uh, but congratulations. It's, you're going to be missed, and I hope we uh, um, we get some people to applaud. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll miss it, but, uh, but it's also a good time for me to do it. You know, we'll promise to check in on us every now and then. And, after dinner, before well, dinner. Can't watch it on television because we don't get it, <laughs> Heather Wood. No, we're not on Comcast. Oh. Wow. Oh, oh. oh, that's why I had to change your email. Ah. Yep. Jeez. The whole voting block doesn't even see at us. Okay. Norm was on the hiring committee uh, that I interviewed with yes, when so. I first came here, and I always remember that. It was just. One of the things I remember the most about coming here to interview was everyone was so smiling and happy and it was just such a positive energy and it was just one of the reasons why I was like, yeah, this is a place where I want to work. I'm going to tell you one thing, Kathy, when you interviewed the first, your first interview, when you left the room, I said, she's the one. There you go. Sometimes you just know. It's been a really, really good fit for me. Well, thank you, Norm. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'd just like to add on a personal note, Norm. You know, I'm a newbie to planning boards and what they do, and you have been a great resource personally to me and thank a you. source of wisdom. And, and, and well, not I much really, wisdom. <laughs> oh, yeah. You'd be surprised. I tried to listen. I just want to thank you so much for that. Thank I feel you. much better equipped now than I did the first time I sat in this thank chair. You. Appreciate that. So thank you so much. And good luck. Thank you. Before I let you off your microphone, any committees you're still on? <laughs> Pardon? Are there going to be any committees you're still on? Are we going to get to see you at the volunteer breakfast or anything like that? No, no town committees. No. None left, huh? No, because I'm on the planning board's representative on the CEDC. That's right. Okay. Too. And the housing, the housing. Were you on? I was on the housing. Was on. Tom yeah. took over. Tom's on it now. We're going to have to we're gonna reassign. We're going to have to find somebody. We're going to have yeah. to reassign. We're going to have to put that on the agenda. Yep. Okay. That's too bad. Staff updates um, or correspondence. We didn't have any correspondence, I don't think. Well, whatever you sent. You sent. There's nothing significant. Of Except uh, yeah. um, just to follow up on what Lee was saying, I did talk to Rich Bienvenu, and he wants to come to the planning board on August 7th to give that presentation on, on wastewater. Mm -hmm. um, I think obviously a lot of our questions and comments will be related to build out and zoning and economic development and those types of things. Um, the cost recovery is becoming an issue as well, how we're going to pay for it. Right. I think that's, and to be honest with you, I think that was the problem back in 2011 was the method of paying for it, yep. not necessarily that people didn't think we needed it. So that's going to be a major component of, of yep. uh, town meeting and getting people kind of on board. We also may have a, um, an amendment to the VCOD project for 1121 Route 28, which is across the street here, the Stu Bornstein project. Oh, yeah. It's over there. Um, he basically wants to decrease the size of the units, keeping the footprints the same, but go from two story to one story. Um, I think we've hashed out things mostly, but um, we're going to have to go to the design review committee to make sure it's still in compliance with the architectural site design standards, which are mandatory VCOD, and then come to you guys just to make sure. So you're talking about the commercial part? Not of the it. commercial part, that the nine uh, condominium of residential. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know there was yeah. nine condominiums. Yeah, that seemed to be pretty successful over there. The doctor. Um, okay. I think they con they condominiumized it, and he purchased it. Yeah. There were a lot of cars in the parking lot I drove by today. Yeah. I was but surprised so by the number of parking uh, yeah. cars in the parking lot, and I'm not exactly sure who that all four. Um, just to let people know, the Country it's Fest is this weekend at the former drive-in site. Um, Uncle Cracker on Saturday and um, Charlie Daniels Band on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, we are also, last night, I think um, Tom was there, they approved the, the policy for the banners. Remember a couple years ago, you guys had worked on a draft of that. CEDC took it over the finish line and um, 
got approval from the um, Board of Selectmen on that policy. They were attractive. I'm it's sorry. a small area of town, though. No, it's, it's within any public right away. I think the only place that they were looking, CEDC was looking at it, was at the four corners and I think down by the chamber. Right. Um, but I'm, I would assume that that's something that we could also incorporate in the future on the Parkers River Bridge. We I think initially it was about a half a dozen of them. Yeah, there, see, yeah there, there wasn't that many. Enough. They're somewhat um, more expensive, I think, than people realized. Yeah. Um, we are um, town staff between building department and community development has worked on an online permitting guide that we are ready to present to the Board of Selectmen. I believe that's on their agenda for August 13th. Um, I think it came out pretty good. There's a lot of good information in there uh, without being too detailed. Hmm. Um, so that's something that's coming up. Um, and then also um, we are working on finalizing the schedule for um, two public workshops um, that will be held on the bike study that the Cape Cod Commission is working on to see about connectivity um, between the Cape Cod Rail Trail through that big swath of town-owned land down to the drive-in site. Um, it looks like we're going to have a the workshop on August 7th in the afternoon at the Senior Center. I'm going to have to confirm the time with them. And then also August 14th, uh, here at 6 p.m. In, in the hearing room. Um, we're going to be inviting, you know, a lot of other committees as well. The Recreation Commission will be at the 14th meeting. Um, we'll ask Conservation Commission, Drive-In Site Utilization Those Committee, Planning Board, and um, yeah. everyone to come uh, for that. It's kind of interesting. A lot of issues and challenges, but a very interesting idea to see what we can we can do. K Kathy, have uh, the other board members had an opportunity to see that uh, um, Report from the commission on the on the bike path. It's a draft right now. Um, if people are interested in it, I can certainly provide it to you. Um, the um, it might be better to get the final uh, PowerPoint presentation for the workshop along with some revised maps. I didn't think that the maps were um, as legible. Mm. or understandable, I think, to the to the general public. Um, no, I have trouble following them. <laughs> that was my comment. <laughs> yeah, um, so we are working with their GIS person at Cape Cod uh, Commission in order to make some amendments to the plans. So Did you say 6 p.m. here? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the con uh, Recreation Commission is going to have a quick meeting at 5.30 and then they're going to come oh. to you. Okay. Thank you very much. My complaint with the Upcoming meetings we have. Obviously, we now have August 7th and the 21st. We also have August 14th, if you want to attend. We just heard about 6 p.m. here in our very old favorite meeting room. Norm, why don't you do number 10? <laughs> Will we adjourn? One second. Do I have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're out of here. Yeah.